Meng, the merciless Wan Zhou, believed to have left Canada after a BC court dropped sex extradition case. While she's sorry for the inconvenience that she caused, Kavri and Spower arrive in Canada after nearly three years in detention in China. This is the Great White North Report. So the Meng the Merciless drama has finally been played out. A BC court decided on Friday that the extradition case against Meng would be dropped after the Huawei chief financial officer reached a deferred prosecution agreement with the United States government. This was basically the Huawei legal team, representatives of the Chinese Communist Party and the US government, striking a deal. Huawei will have to pay a substantial fine that will be undisclosed. No one's gonna really know the number. In return, Meng is allowed to plead not guilty and is formally released. She'll be able to return home and she believed to have left on Friday. So she entered her plea during a virtual appearance in New York. The DPA, which will last four years from the time of arrest from December 1st of this 2018 to December 1st, 2022. If she complies her obligations, the U.S. Will, remove, will move to dismiss the charges against her at the end of the deferred period. If she doesn't, she can still be prosecuted. So basically, it's a face-saving move move if she does anything stupid again then she can be prosecuted because this is all about fraud a global financial institution that a company operating in iran in violation of u.s sanctions was a local partner of huawei when in fact it was a subsidiary of huawei so meng by entering in the deferred prosecution agreement she's taking responsibility for her principal role in perpetuating the scheme to defraud a global financial institution so basically she's guilty but not guilty she knew what she was doing in order to get funding, but she's not guilty as a face-saving measure and allow her to to go about her business elsewhere. And she won't have the threat of extradition hanging over her shoulders. Now, she made a big speech in front of the courthouse and she said, sorry for the inconvenience caused. <laughs> what inconvenience? She got to stay in her, her home in Vancouver. Plus, she got to eat out and dine in fancy restaurants, go shopping at at certain places while the rest of us were locked down by the pandemic that her country caused. We didn't inconvenience her at all. She still got to do what she wanted, basically. Within, she even got her family to come visit her. So good riddance to her. On the positive side, we did get the two Michaels back, Kavri and Spavor. They're back in Canada. They boarded a flight hours after BC court drops the extradition case. So these two cases were linked, no doubt about it. And they are now back on home soil after three years after they were first detained. They arrived in Calgary shortly before 8, 8 a.m. Saturday. Our not-so-favorite Prime Minister Justine was there to welcome them. The two Michaels were arrested in retaliation to the response of the Huawei executive arrest. Even though the Chinese Communist Party has consistently denied the cases were linked, Spavor was found guilty of spying and sentenced to 11 years in prison. The Calgary trial was concluded in March but he had not yet been sentenced. So he was in limbo. Obviously, the timing of the release of both men, the timing of the releases of Meng, Spavor, and Kavar show cl China clearly saw a connection between the two. You know, that's no brainer there. The communist bandits on the mainland have said that there's been no linkage between the two, but by putting them on the plane Friday night, they've clearly acknowledged this was a hostage taking, according to Colin Robertson, a former Canadian diplomat. And it really was one or the other in exchange that was reminiscent of Cold War swaps. That's what they did. It was plain. We, I've known this for three years. And it does send a message to other countries that if, if they cross a line with China, then Beijing will retaliate. Either they'll pick up a few of their citizens and hold them hostage, or they'll, they'll do it with trade, economic warfare. Beijing refuses to back down once they take a certain stance. It makes the Chinese Communist Party look extremely bad. They've lost a lot of face over this. But, like I said, the good news is Kavri and Spavar are home, and I don't think they'll ever want to go back to China ever again. I hope the two Michaels tell us exactly what happened to them in full detail without holding anything back, though I suspect they also had to, they had to do signed confessions before they left at some point. But it'd be interesting to see what they have to say about their detention. I, I fully expect them to be able, they'll be on the talk show circuit and they'll probably write a book about it and maybe even get a TV deal. United States, when they negotiated with Huawei, it was probably part of the deal was to get these two guys out. And I thank them for that, if they did that. Because I know the Canadian government didn't put enough pressure on China themselves. Good to see the two men home, safe and sound, and uh, hopefully this doesn't happen again. Any Canadians out there, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Hit the like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel, and uh, hit the bell for notifications. Until next time, this has been the Great White North Report.